Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Sprocket Forge by Sophisticated Cerberus Games. This is a 2-5 player game for ages 14 and up and it plays 45-60 to 60 minutes. And in the game, you are basically concocting a forge with gears. You're going to be enchanting these gears to produce resources, eventually upgrading those gears to give you additional resources and value, and you're going to be utilizing that value to turn it into mana. Mana is then going to be used to gather cards from the Merchant, Noble, and Commoner deck that will allow you to gain victory victory points, as well as unique bonuses. Utilize your mana and be careful because if you don't, it'll have to become um, placed onto your game board to be used for later, or when you do use it, it'll get exhausted. It'll go onto this little vat here, which you'll have to exhaust, because if you don't, you're gonna lose victory points or renown in this game. At a certain point, if you have too much mana clogging up your events, you're gonna start taking negative victory points, and you'll need to utilize all your power to gain the value of mana, utilize it with the cards, and then dump it and exhaust it. Rinse and repeat, make the best possible sprocket forge you possibly can. And we'll talk about the game, how to set it up, how to play, and of course, my review. To set up the game Sprocket Forge, the first thing you'll do is determine the number of players playing the game. Each player is going to receive a forge board, looks like one of these guys here. And you're gonna give them five gears that we'll be placing in just like this. Make sure that you place each of them with a pin going straight to the bottom in the little area that has a little white border. From there, you're going to give each player a player aid that is also a place where they'll be placing their commoner and merchant cards, and uh, somebody's going to be the first player. Each player is also going to get a mana of each type, and you'll be placing it in your exhaust vent. Place each of the uh, mana cubes, up to four, uh, totaling four, in the high value area. Each player is also going to get a favor card worth one money. And you're also going to be getting a random commoner card and a random merchant card for each player. Go ahead and place them in any of the five spaces down below on your player aid. Then you're going to go ahead and place out all the cards and the enchantments. Reveal three enchantments from the stack of enchantments after you've shuffled them. Uh, place the commoner deck face up on the table. And then underneath that, you'll place the merchant deck after you shuffle it and deal out three face up, the noble deck and three face up, and then these petition cards, three face up. The rest of the favor cards will be shuffled and put to a deck and you can go ahead and set it aside somewhere within reach. There's also upgrades. Go ahead and separate them. There are three different types. There's exhausting and, ref uh, and rotating and cards. Put them somewhere because you're gonna be gathering those. Finally, you'll take the mana. There are four different types of mana, earth, uh, you know, was it earth, fire, water, etc. There are four different colors. Place them within reach of all players as well. After you have done that, you're going to do a snake like um, drafting system where the first player will take one of these enchantments and put it on their game board in one of the five gears. The next player will do that in clockwise order. It'll get to the last player. They will then take two as opposed to one and it'll come right back around so that each player has two enchantments on any two of the five gears that they have. From there, go ahead and take the main game board, the scoring board out, place it within reach of all players as well, and place each player that's playing the game with a renowned marker on zero. And then you're ready to start the game Sprocket Forge. Playing the game Sprocket Forge is quite simple. The first player will start, take their turn, end their turn, check to see if the game ends, and then pass to the next player. And it'll continue going along that route until somebody hits 30 victory points. When that happens, there's going to be a final round, and then people will be able to produce. And hopefully with your producing, you can turn these guys in, but no main action. On your turn, you're going to first take a main action, and there are four main actions. After you've taken your actions, each player is going to get to follow that action. It's basically like a lesser valued action of the same type. Then you're going to get to complete orders. Any orders on your bottom of your reference board in the five spaces you can complete if you can spend these guys here. After that, you're then going to check uh, your gears and rotate them at once, going clockwise in any of the four positions on the sides here. And you're going to store any mana from your mana pool that you don't use into your exhaust. There are four actions that you can take as main actions. Action one is produce. If you want to produce as your main action, you will check each of the bottom areas of each of your gears. They're the areas with the little dot on your gear. And each of them that have an enchantment or an upgrade that is facing the downward position, like this one here is a green one, is going to get each of the mana or symbols related to those specific gears and upgrades. So in this case here, if I had a red one and a green one and I wanted to produce, I would simply take a green and I would take a red cube. I would place them in my mana pool. 
Then, after I've done my produce, each player will get a get chance to produce on their own. It's a follow action. They'll get to take one mana of their choice and put it in their mana pool. The other option, whenever you follow, if you don't want to take the lighter action, you can actually just choose to instead rotate your board. And to do that, you're simply going to rotate your game board so that the next portion of your enchantment and or upgrade faces, it like rotates one notch. You look at the little dot on your gears and move it from one space to the next. The next action you can take is take orders. Now you already have orders to start with. These are the cards you'll turn in when you have enough mana. Um, but if you need more of them, you're gonna have to get them from over here in the market. If it's your main action, you'll get to take three of them. You can take the common, merchant, or noble ones. Take those and place them below on your screen here. You can only have five. If you ever get more, you have to discard the ones you previously owned. After you've taken your three orders, everybody is going to get to take a follow action. They can either rotate their gears, like always, or they can draw one random merchant card um, and put it into their their row down here at the bottom. The next action is clean up. You may, instead of doing any of the main actions in the game, simply remove the uh, mana from your exhaust. You do not want your forge to get filled with mana because then you're going to start losing victory points, basically renowned from your game board here. So keeping this free of mana is useful. At certain points it's going to start filling up. So spend these cubes here, placing them back into the pile when you choose to clean up. If you're following this action, you're going to simply remove a vented mana, just one of them, or rotate your gears. The last action is Petition. Petition is a unique one and it actually requires you to have these favor cards here. You can spend a favor card as the main action, discarding it, and then you're going to be able to take one of the Petition cards here um, in the row. Each of them also has a requirement. Some of them might say that you need to have uh, 0 to 8 vented mana and no more. This one might say zero to four. It really just depends. They have unique requirements on them, including the favor you have to spend. And when you do that, you will gain a, an amount of renown or victory points and move it up on your game board here, as well as the action. This one here says to draw two favors, then keep one and discard the other. Each other player can then choose to follow the action. It's a lighter follow, obviously, just like always. They can choose to discard a favor but they don't actually get to take a um, petition card. Instead, they can gain the victory points of the, fa of the petition that was chosen by the first player. So in this case here, if I discarded my favor, my first my, my action was to, to uh, petition, uh, as long as I had zero to four mana that was vented, I would gain four victory points, draw two uh, favors, and keep one, right? Everybody else can discard a favor to then gain four victory points. Favors are worth victory points at the end of the game, so sometimes it's worth getting rid of them if you don't think you can petition, because sometimes only with one or maybe two points, so discarding them for up to four points is actually a pretty good deal. Once you've done one of those four actions, producing, taking orders, cleaning up, or petitioning, then you're going to move on to um, uh, completing orders. In order to complete orders, you'll need to vent. So for instance, let's just say that I wanted to uh, complete one of these enchantments and it needs two green and a blue. Let's say I have those. I could spend them after my action by venting them and putting them in my exhaust here. And then I can cast the card. This card is going to have a, a cost right here in the middle. It's going to then tell you what you get for your victory points and what you get for your bonuses. The bonuses uh, can be a random a variety of different things, whether it be allowing you to vent extra mana, uh, could be allowing you to gain upgrades, it could allow you to gain new enchantments. Basically, there are symbols on the cards and what they say is what they're going to give you in addition to the victory points you get for turning them in. When you turn them in, you'll simply discard them, gain the victory points, gain all the bonuses, and then after that, any mana that is left over in your mana pool, you can do one of two things. A, um, you can put them on empty spaces on enchantment slots on your board next to your gears, or if you don't have any spaces left, you have to put them up into your exhaust. That's the least likely thing you want to do, but uh, sometimes you might have to. These guys, when they are stored, if they rotate on your game board and they look like they're in the area in which you can produce, instead of producing a blue from a blue, you're actually going to take the cube that you stored previously and put it into your mana pool. So there are ways that you can get your mana back at a later date. Once you've gotten rid of the mana from your mana pool by either venting it or storing it, 
The last thing you're gonna do is rotate. So instead of rotating when you follow an action, if it's your turn, you'll simply rotate at the end of your turn, thusly changing the different things that you can gain when you produce on your next turn. You'll always have to do the step though. You're always gonna to have to take an action. Everybody will follow it. Complete any orders that you have by spending mana and putting them in the appropriate locations. Then you're going to rotate your gears. It's a must. And finally, store the mana. Check to see if the game is over by whoever has, somebody hits 30 points. And there you go. That is how you play the game, Sprocket Forge. There are a number of different things in the game that change it up. Each of the cards will get drastically more powerful. A, the commoner cards are used to gain more enchantments. If you have two enchantments, you'll need to get at least three more, but you have ways of getting rid of enchantments with bonus actions. The merchants are cheaper, but give you victory points as well as let you exhaust and gain favors, etc. And the nobles are even better. Petition cards, like I said, are ways to gain bonuses as well as additional victory points. And all the while, you're gonna be customizing your Sprocket Forge, utilizing it to gain mana and spending it to complete orders. There are two bonus actions in the game. One is that you can disenchant gear. How that works is you'll remove the enchantment as well as you will remove uh, the upgrade if there is one. You'll gain the mana associated with it as well as making a produce action, but just for that one, and discard the enchantment. So there is ways you can gain bonus uh, mana, but at a cost of losing that enchantment and possibly upgrades on that specific gear. Uh, the other one is you can actually refresh one of the decks. There are multiple decks here as you can see and if you don't like these guys you can actually discard them and replace them with three new cards so that you can hopefully get better cards when you're trying to gain these specific orders here. So those are the two bonus actions you can take. You can only do each of them once a turn, but they are super useful when you're able to utilize them. And there you go, that's the game. At some point, at the end of a player's turn, somebody's gonna hit 30, everybody takes an extra round in which you'll produce, and then you'll try and complete these orders without taking an action, a main action or a follow action. And then whoever has the most points is the winner of Sprocket Forge. Sprocket Forge is quite literally an engine building game. It's a game in which you're gonna have an engine of five gears that are all connected to each other, that all rotate each other. This is a game about gathering mana by utilizing your enchantments, utilizing your upgrade pieces, and producing. Eventually, after you've produced enough, you're gonna then be able to spend that mana to complete orders at the bottom of your main game board here. And you'll be able to turn these guys in for victory points, AKA renown, as well as bonuses. And there's a variety of bonuses in the game, but the main ones are pretty much enchantments, upgrades, um, favors, and you can also exhaust getting rid of these guys because having too much can be dangerous. And as the game progresses, this exhaustion area, this exhaust from the forge is gonna actually start to pile up. On your turn, you'll have four basic actions and two bonuses that are used sometimes when you need them to be utilized. But for the most part, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. You're going to produce the mana, then you're going to hopefully turn these guys in with the mana that you've gained, gaining new upgrades, gaining new enchantments, and then going and gathering new orders that will then, lastly, not only give you more victory points, but improve the engine that you are designing in your forge. There is player in action in the game, and most of that takes uh, place with the follow actions. Deciding what action you take is going to give a benefit, although a slight one, to each player in the game. If they want to produce, and you don't necessarily need to produce that much, let them do that action so that you can do something that they're gonna less likely need to do. So you can determine what actions you wanna take based on what you know the other people on the table want. So watching other players and their board can help. But at the same time, it's also kind of solitaire in which you get to make your own forge. Nobody's gonna mess with your forge or get rid of your enchantments or upgrades. These are gonna stay yours and protected, which is nice. It has the addition of there being different types of orders that you can actually just simply get rid of to prevent players from being able to operate with, or simply being able to take them for yourself and save them and utilize them when you have the mana for them. Selecting enchantments that are associated with these specific specific types of orders is gonna be very useful. You don't wanna have a bunch of fire mana in your forge and drawing the wind or water or earth or whatever type of orders when you don't have that type of mana. So there is this balancing act of this engine that you're building with the orders that you're turning in while watching the other players in the game. I love engine building games and this does a great job of this. There are previous games, Stifling Dark, it's a completely different game. And when seeing this one here and how it was built in the style of engine building was really cool. It showed like completely different side of sophisticated servers and I loved it. This game plays solid. It has a unique engine building feature. It's straightforward, it's easy to learn. Take 
take an action, everybody follows, complete orders, discard the mana that you didn't utilize, either on your board or into the exhaust, and then check to see if the game is over, and pass. Rinse and repeat. Cards get removed, they're always gonna get put back, there are ways to gain bonuses, whether it be by favor or petitions, and the plays that your opponents make do matter in progressing your engine. There's one thing about the game is the snake-like uh, draft where you're going to be pulling these guys and placing them on your game board. In my opinion, while you can probably make an argument that some of them are that they're all uniquely valuable in their own way, I feel like some of these tiles are inherently better than others. And it can be a little bit annoying when at the beginning of the game, some player just gets a, a better tile, especially that last player happens to drop these great enchantments and they pop out and they get a ton of spaces that have a mana on them. Cause some of them will have like five, others will have like four. Some will have even just two. And it's like, oh, I've got two tile, two of these enchantments with only two mana. So this other player's got like two with like six or five. It's like, damn. So I prefer actually what I likely do is house rule it. So that way there's uh, the first two, four, six, eight in a four player game are all the ones with like four or whatever to kind of balance that out. Uh, you don't necessarily need to and there are reasons why you'd want ones with less spaces of mana so that you can actually store your mana on the game board as opposed to putting in your exhaust. And I do get that, I understand the argument for that, but I like kind of the balance at the very beginning so it doesn't feel like people are kind of in a different way at the beginning of the game. It's a light thing and it's probably not even a really unbalanced thing, but it's just the way it feels where it feels like I'm getting less mana at this time. But in the later game, I start to actually develop mana and I can start saving it, whereas the other player cannot. And so there's that kind of give and take to it. But either way, it's just kind of the feeling that I got from it. Now it's probably mean, I think one other player felt that, the other players actually kind of disagreed with us. So take that as you will. The quality of the game is excellent. I love the super triple thick boards with the extra mana pool space and the exhaust space being able to also play, make good use of the game boards as well as the sprockets. They feel good. It's easy to rotate this thing. There's no problems with the game board. It's always a big thing with these type of, let's say gimmicky, but the idea of like, when you put something that's like tactile in a game, you wanna make sure that it feels good and it actually enhances the experience. And this game does that excellently. It feels like a board and get dice type of game when they utilize this feature. And this feature in this game works excellent. And it's very noticeable in these spaces here. I actually kind of want pegs in there so you can even see it better, but it's just a little nitpick. Uh, the game board here is, uh, the, your play reference is great. It has all the symbols that explain what everything is. You will know what the symbols on your board are because it tells you up here. It tells you that the card is to draw a favor. The gear is to take an enchantment. Uh, the cog is to take an upgrade. This can give you either or. You can exhaust with this barrel here or you can take a vented mana from a neighbor, which is also another way that you can kind of uh, utilize other people's mana by helping them, but also helping yourself and et cetera, et cetera. There are additional actions in this game. And then it also tells you the four different actions, the follow action, what you do afterwards, and then your two free actions, being able to disenchant or refresh a market row. The first player is never gonna change. It doesn't matter once the game starts. It just start, starts to go free flowing. So the first player is just kind of a way to determine who starts the game off with. And if you would like, you can actually start the game off with who grinded the other person's, or whoever the person who grinds the most gears. <laughs> that works pretty well, but anyway, Quality artwork, quality design, the game feels great. It feels like I have my own forge. I feel like I'm upgrading, I'm building, I'm advancing, and I love that. It's also one of those games where you wanna keep playing once it hits that 30 point, so you don't feel like you've accomplished everything, which is actually a good thing, because it makes you wanna jump back in and try again, and ignore a new unique way to gather more mana and more victory points by the time the game ends. Those games that have that just in the right spot of ending, this one does exactly that, and that's really great. You probably won't even finish all the different like enchantments and or upgrades, and you have to kind of pick and choose, which is always a cool thing where deciding where you wanna go in a game like this and what you wanna choose, you can't kind of do everything. Overall, Sprocket Forge is an excellent game. It does a wonderful job, and it does exactly what it's trying to do. If you're looking for a game that is an engine builder that has a kind of unique tactile feel, then this is definitely one I highly suggest. For those of you who don't like, don't like super thinky games or games where you have to think ahead to determine what mana is coming next and what you need to purchase and pick up and determine with your enchantments which type of cards, it is definitely a brain burner. You definitely need to think ahead and plan ahead and have a good grasp of what your opponents are doing. And for those type of people, it's probably not for you. Overall though, it's an excellent game and I strongly recommend it.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sprocket Forge by a Sophisticated Cerberus Games. If you're interested in picking this one up, I strongly suggest you go ahead and take a look down below in the description. It's currently available on crowdfunding. You can also go ahead and check out our website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. If you appreciate us, you like us, you've seen more than one of our videos here, consider subscribing, liking, pushing the bell notification button. It does greatly help us out and we greatly appreciate it. We do whatnot on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We do a live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. You can come watch us play games just like this one here. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I'll enjoy building a Sprocket Forge with you next time.